folks. Come on here, come on. At your services. How are you all? I'm feeling very, very well. And welcome to an outside broadcast with whiskey. Of course. Cheers, y'all. Mm. Now, this is a video which is, well, for me, it's been long anticipated, long awaited. It's the Rambo Last Blood Heartstopper Knife. Oh, yes. I reviewed the Rambo Knives, God, over two years ago now. And I said at the time, because the film Last Blood hadn't come out, it was being heavily touted. Sly himself was putting loads of stuff on Instagram. And he was saying about the two, not one, but two knives he'd be using in Rambo Last Blood. Knives designed by German knife maker Dietmar Pohl. Dietmar Pohl, this is where the circle turns completely. Because Dietmar Pohl, as a youngster, watched First Blood and loved that original First Blood knife. I do believe we have it here. This one. Oh yeah. So what he did, deep my pole, he took a round file and he filed down his bowie knife to make the saw back, the iconic saw back of the first blood knife. And that set him on the path to create knives. And he became quite a mover and shaker within the industry. His pole force knives are recognized worldwide and they were wonderful. There's a few trademarks amongst them, a few signature flourishes, which we will find in the Heartstopper Knife from Last Blood. Now, I want to say first of all, many, many thanks to Preppers, Preppers Shop UK, who sent me this, and they know this is a knife I've been really, really wanting for a long, long time. Now, when the film first came out and I first saw the knife, the heart stopper, I was initially like, oh, that's a bit of a step back from the, uh, the Rambo blades, the big Bowie blade with the saw back and the Rambo 3, the huge, let's take a, a Russian attack helicopter out of the sky, spear it and bring it down. I thought it's a bit of a step back, you're going back to basics, which indeed the film Last Blood really is. It's Rambo back home on the ranch and it's a very sort of look you know what i'm gonna say now because i massively bigged this movie up at the time and then i saw it and i thought okay it's not quite what i expected but i still love it and i do love it as a revenge drama with stallone as a rambo movie i think it's absolutely piss poor but hey you know that's the way things are but his weaponry, his knives, are par excellence. And I have come to realise just how much I love that knife, the Heartstopper. Dietmar Pohl did two blades for it, the MK8 and the MK9. MK means movie knife. 8 means 8 inch, 9, 9 inch. There you go. The Heartstopper is the 9 inch knife. And the MK8 was one you see it in the movie and it's that's more of a bowie blade it's more of a traditional bowie style weapon and you do see it and it is a great weapon and to be perfectly honest that one cleaned up you try and get that knife now it's very hard to do so because you know there's just that sold like hotcakes but the real one that we're after is this and this is from anglo arms in the uk this is their replica of the Heartstopper knife. There we go. Look at that. 15 inch from there to there. The blade, this is the MK9. It's a 9 inch blade. In actual fact, that is 9.1. So it's slightly longer than a 9 inch blade. And we're talking two tone. We're talking satin. And we're talking polished. Beautiful. Can you see that glinting in the sun? I hope you can. Now, this knife is a replica, and it's the cheaper end of the replica scale. Yes, Stallone has endorsed the Hollywood replicas, Rambo, Last Blood knife, and it costs a bloody fortune. 
and yeah it's great but it's engraved with Rambo all over it and I've said so many times now that as much as I love decorative wall pieces I use knives I use swords I fought with all of these things I like if I'm gonna get a knife I want it to be a proper knife a functional working thing plus if I want it from a, a movie character Rambo wouldn't go on a mission with his name all over it. He wouldn't. That's something that James Bond would do. But Rambo wouldn't do that. So I don't like having, you know, whether it's been engraved or laser inscribed on it. And I've got plenty like that. I've got all the other Rambo knives where it's laser inscribed and all that. I, I, don't, I don't want that. They're nice to put on a wall. So if you want to spend an absolute fortune buying something with, you know, a, perhaps... A titanium blade like the original was a titanium blade that the, the Etna Pole created. If you want to spend a fortune on that, fine. That's an indestructible blade and you're going to put it on a wall and never use it. What's the point? I don't get that. I don't understand that. Campcraft or hunting or, well, this is a tactical fighter knife, this. This is genuinely designed for combat. Got to bear that in mind. That's a combat knife, right? It will use, you can use it for camp craft. I, when I first got this, it arrived yesterday, preppershot.com, .co.uk, they will issue stuff. Once you buy it, you get it the next day. Primarily, you know, mostly you'll get it the next day. Brilliant, great people to talk to, great on the phone, great characters, love them to bits. This arrived yesterday. I put it through some trials and I should have filmed it, but I didn't. I hacked down a load of stuff over there. Can you see? Well, you can see the remnants of what I hacked down. There's a couple of big, like, tree trunks there. Behind this one, next to the, uh, the evil bed work shed there. The overgrown work shed. And I hacked into that. And this does a bang-up job. It comes with a very, very sharp tip. A little plastic case will sit over that. The blade itself isn't that sharp but can be ground down. This is stainless steel 440. Now, I know some of you are gonna go like, well, I want Damascus steel. You know, I want anthracite, I want this, I want that. That's garbage. It's not garbage. Most knives are made out of 440 stainless steel. These do not suffer deformity. They do not corrode. Stain 440 stainless steel is, is a kind of standard. That's a great, steel to be used in a blade wonderful stuff very strong very durable very resilient brilliant and you can sharpen it so you can sharpen this blade to your heart's content so you can cut a pubic hair in thin air hey see i'm a poet and you know it but this blade is absolutely gorgeous this is the second of the two knives this is the one where stallone cuts the heart out of the, the drug cartel badass bad boy leader at the end he's pinned him with arrows from his crossbow no his bow it's not, it's not a crossbow it's a bow isn't it and uh, and then he comes up and he will slice the chest open and take the heart out in front of him you know but he deserves it now this this blade massively machine tooled cross guard there can you see that not like a normal Rambo knife, the vintage ones where you've got like screwdrivers and all sorts there. This is just a very ornate machine tooled cross guard. Okay. Sharpened on one side, one side. There are some replicas out there where they're sharpened on this side too. That's not the way it should be. Not the way it should be at all. As I say, we've got just over nine inches of solid blade there. It's a full tang, folks. That is one solid piece. The blade runs from there all the way down to the skull crusher at the end. Can you see that? The skull crusher. A nice little touch there, yeah. A secondary weapon that you've got on this. All the way down. And what's happened here, what they've done, as in a case of most, a lot, a lot of knives, the, the handle guards, the grip, have been fastened on here. Now, in many cases, these guards are just adhered and they're not and they can shake loose they can become dislodged but 
A trademark of the Etma pole is the screws. And you can see there the hole and the groove to tighten these. This is a wonderful, wonderful move. And it's a bit of a signature thing with some of the other force pole knives to have these screws in there. So you can tighten that. Now this arrived straight out of the box. The box, by the way, was a very inauspicious, purely black box with a nice little warning saying, this is really sharp, be careful. <laughs> no certificate signed by Stallone, nothing like that. And his name is not on the blade anywhere. And I don't want that. I don't want that. If you're going to do that, you'd, you'd spend a fortune for a knife which is superb, but you're never going to use. It's just gonna, you may as well get just a plastic thing with Stallone's name on it and hang it on the wall. No, I'm not wrong, I'm not wrong. Now, what you'll notice immediately from this is what we have here. That's not a trigger, this doesn't shoot anything. That is a sub hilt. Now a sub hilt, now there's no historical relevance to a sub hilt on a knife you have them on certain swords for example a rapier and what that does there it gives you added protection for the forward finger so with a rapier when you're involved in fencing that gives you added protection there and an extra bit of grip a bit more sort of balance and stability with the blade with the hilt on a knife you don't tend to see it and the jewellery's out on this. A lot of people say, like, well, it's just stupid. You shouldn't have that. Uh, the only reason you've got there, that sub hilt there, that trigger, is for aesthetic reasons. It looks cool, but it serves no purpose. To be honest with you, I don't agree. I think it does serve a purpose. Pretty much like I just mentioned the rapier, that gives protection. If you're involved in a knife fight, for example, that gives you added protection for your forward finger. And it's very, very comfortable. I'm going to show you this in a bit more close-up detail in a minute. But that protects that finger. Plus, you have this rather wonderfully curved inner part of the cross guard. So rather than your finger sliding up against a hard angle or an unyielding bit of steel, it's actually very ergonomic. So your finger slides around there. Well, actually, it doesn't slide around there because it shouldn't slide around there. But if it did, you're not going to hurt your little finger on that your thumb against that side your thumb wedged up against the groove there the curve there very comfortable now for knife fighting you really that's the way you want to have your hand because you need to be able to direct and pinpoint what you're doing with the blade if you're chopping and hacking and thrusting that is not where you want your thumb to be because you that will if you thrust into something hard and unyielding that will jar back now you imagine that that sends a shockwave down your thumb to your wrist to your elbow that could disable you just because you've had bad management on the handling of the, the, the handle so for actual sort of chopping and stuff like that and plunging in you hold it like that and the grip is magnificent the balance the weight of this knife is absolutely superb i don't know how much it weighs it's heavier than you think but lighter than it looks so it's very it's very dexterous it's very sort of malleable it's superbly handled and speaking of handles look at the scales here look at this now in the film this this is sold as being olive drab green olive drab the mark eight knife is black that's got a black hilt it doesn't have that cross guard it's smaller than this as well but it's a wonderful bowie knife it's superb but it's a different design than this but this now there are many many versions of this knife where this is bright green and looks wrong looks hideous this is a very sort of pale green which works a lot better in lots of publicity shots you see Stallone carrying this and it's clearly this olive drab green the actual one from um, Hollywood uh, replicas is a sort of khaki 
beige, brown, sandy sort of colour. And it, it seems to change colour in certain light. I know, I've seen it, and that that is the, the proper colour. I don't know how you'd term that as, as a, some sort of chameleon. I don't know, I don't know. But in lots of shots and publicity photos, Rambo is carrying a knife, the, the heart stopper, and it has got this sort of colour going, going through it. Now that is not too overt. I like that. That's a wonderful, wonderful olive drab. Look at the scale. Look at that. Oh, excuse me one moment while I just have a swig of it. Now, these grips here, on this version from Anglo Arms, that, I do believe, is just metal. It certainly isn't plastic. It's not plastic, as some, as some of them are. These olive drab green grips are metal. That's what the stats say and the specifications say. Deep Mapole's original one, it was my Carter, my Carter canvas. Now, a my Carter canvas can be exceptionally hard, resilient and durable and resistant. And it feels bloody hard. But I don't know if that is genuinely my Carter. I think that is just metal. Because obviously this is a cheaper, ver this is a much cheaper variant. Of course it is and yet it's bloody good so that is not going anywhere that's not going to fracture that's not going to shatter it's not going to break it's not going to crack that is and very very comfortable i don't know the sun's coming out now which is going to play havoc with this but it might get a nice bit of glint on the on the polished part of the blade but if you can see inside those scales there which are lovely and they add to the grip they add to the texture they add to your, you know, the friction that you can create, the grip that you can create there. But inside all of these, there are diagonal striations, which again, only help you grip that even stronger and more firmly. This is a wonderful touch. You know, like the Rambo survival knives. Let's, let's face it, here they are. Here's the original one. Hollow handles, folks. Hollow handles. As much as I love this knife and, and the mission knife from First Blood Part 2, which is right there, as much as I love these and they are truly, truly iconic, they're not stable enough. There's no strength in that hilt. It's hollow. So you smacking down on a tree branch to make a spear, you know, the blade could bounce out. I know, and I've said it before, the... Um, Adhesive that they use now to put on a, a bit of a rat tail tang, perhaps, but the adhesive that they use to affix the blade to the hilt is very, very strong. But it still is a weak point, there's no getting around that. That's a weak point. Nothing can compare with a full tang. And as you can see, as I said before, that blade starts there and ends there. A skull crusher ends there. That's a solid piece, machine tooled cross guard going on there and these hand grips screwed on that ain't going anywhere folks that is super super hard and the balance is terrific the weight the downward is majestic i was cutting through i was cutting into nine inch um, trunks not trunks that someone was wearing for olympic diving not my, not that kind of thing but big tree trunks that were there I was hacking in, doing the diagonal, and then doing the chop, and these great big triangular chunks were flying out. It was doing the job brilliantly, brilliantly. No rocking about, there's gonna be no shakiness. That is a completely stable knife. That's brilliantly manufactured, brilliantly machine tooled. You can sharpen that. I would advise that you do so, if you can. But, you don't need to. Now, the lanyard. The difference that you've got between this and the original Deep Mapole, A, it's not titanium. <laughs> but hey, do you need it? No, you don't. The lanyard, which beautifully is in the exact, the, the correct sort of desert camouflage paracord. See that there? See that? That's accurate. Now, in the movie, and a sort of speciality of Deep Mapole is that the lanyard hole, can you see here the hole that goes through? Normally that's hidden beneath the scaled hand grips. That's actually secreted so that the lanyard, 
the paracord comes out from beneath these where it is as you can see on this and the most replicas in fact you'll find it's actually a hole drilled through actually just in the base of the, the skull crusher part now another bit which i'm not too sure about really is if you can see here i'm going to show you this now like there's the skull crusher part which is the blade it's just the back end of the blade now if you look the hand grips are not flush with the tang of you know the blade itself on either side I don't know if you can see that there now I don't know if the on the actual one that they are flush I've heard that they are I've also heard that they're not I don't know I've looked at close-up pictures and I still can't quite tell sometimes it looks like it's flush sometimes it looks like it looks just like this certainly on the inner the inner grip the actual blade looks more like that where you've got the grip and then a beveled sort of um, extension of the tang of the handle the steel is pronounced for the trigger going up to the cross guard that looks genuine to me that top bit i really don't genuinely know if that should be flush but i will say this not being flush only adds to the tactile sort of ergonomics of the handle it gives you more purchase it gives you more to grip onto and i like that i like that i think that's wonderful that's not going anywhere folks that is a truly beautiful bit of kit yep. the lanyard now okay uh, the lanyard really i think in the movies is a visual thing because you know the idea is that you put you hook your hand through it and you hold the knife so it, if it comes out of your hand you lose the grip of it it's still attached to you bad move folks bad move that gets you're involved in some kind of close in close quarter combat some of the knife man that gets knocked out of your hand and swings loose that is now an absolute swinging pendulum of death to you that's going to cut into your groin your hip your side your inner arm that's going to do a lot of damage to you so you don't want that i i do not agree with that at all i like them to be there if they're in the movie that's fine i'll have it as a bit of aesthetic you know perfection but other than that practical purposes no i don't get it at all if you are involved in some kind of close quarter skirmish with someone else who knows what they're doing and this gets knocked out of your hand my only advice would be like to get your foot on that knife to keep keep it secure and then go to grapple go in close and take them down get up your knife use theirs do whatever you've got to do but do not have that swinging around your wrist because then that's an, you've got another opponent your own knife is now working against you so don't be doing that that's just silly now so yeah the lanyard is accurate i like that the blade shape is very accurate the satin and the uh, and the polished is beautiful the cross guard is very accurate the olive drab seems to be accurate to me i know it has the khaki sort of beige look in the movie but it also has the green look too so what's going on there many prop knives are made lots of rubber knives were made for it and a great thing about deep Napole and sly stallone's relationship is that because stallone put so much trust in him he said look, look this is the idea i want and he had he had some pictures of a, a knife he sent him pictures of, of him holding a knife this sort of size i want it to be like that sort of dimensions so Dietmar Paul came up with a few ideas, a few templates, and he made them in cardboard and paper, and then sent them off to him. You know, just pictures. How'd you like that? He said, okay, yeah, well, just make the, the blade a bit narrower. That'll be for the Mark case. I want it more narrower and more streamlined and more deadly looking, but I want that to be the hard stopper. It's got to be the one. And then when he arrived on set with the knives, and he said, like, choose the one I'm going to make. And he had 14 days to then manufacture that blade properly. He said, which ones do you want? And Sly Stallone gave him the, the ultimate honour. He just said to him, I love them all. You pick. And he's like, whoa! So I get to choose what the knives are. So Deep Mapol genuinely created the iconic Heartstopper knife. And the Mark 8 too, as well. And when he finally got it, Sly Stallone said, Oi, German engineering. <laughs> It's an awesome, awesome blade. The sheath, folks, is leather. 
it's not engraved or stamped. Again, I like that. You're going to have people that say, well, I want Rambo written on it. I want it stenciled in and just stitched or oh, whatever. If you want that, great. You could even write it on yourself. Personally, I don't. And I would get the high-end stuff. Of course I would. But I'm not going to use them. So all of that talent and all of that machinery going into it and the, the materials being used, what a waste. Genuinely, what a waste. There's a knife, 440 stainless steel, that you're going to use, you can use. Camp craft, you know, I'm pointing to trees. It's a tactical fighting weapon. We know that. We know that. And I'm not endorsing any kind of illicit behaviour, of course. It is a prop recul replica when all said and done. But back, back to this. Now, the differences with this are, in the movie, that actually has a leg tie. A hole punched through here and a leg tie. So it goes around his leg as well. Fine. If you want to do that, you can do that. You can easily put a hole in that and, and put a leg tie on it. More paracord or twine or whatever you want to use. So, you know, you can do that yourself. That's not a huge, you know, deficiency there. But, you know, I've just noticed the mission. The mission knife from First Blood Part 2, which is the bigger version of the initial knife. That is an absolute beauty, isn't it? But again, hollow! And we're stamped with Rambo and all that. I'm like, oh, I know, I know, I know. And I could, I could go on endlessly about that. But there's whiskey to be drunk. Cheers, y'all. Cheers, Sly. Cheers, Deeper. But from Anglo Arms and from pre preppersshop.co.uk, links below, folks. You're going to get that for less than £30. 30 of the Queen's English Pines. You're going to get a majestic knife, a beautiful replica of a fantastic movie weapon, wielded by Sly Stallone. Come on now. And it's functional. It works. It works. So many wall hangers don't, don't snap. Any kind of impact you give them, they're going to snap. I've already proved that this doesn't. I should have filmed, I know I should have filmed it, but you know. I didn't, I never thought about that at the time. I just wanted to test it. It was that ego. Oh, could I have a go on this? Come on now. Sadly, there aren't any Mexicans around there whose hearts they were willing to offer up to me but you know so I can't I can't reenact the final scene but as a tactical fighter that is just an excellent excellent example look at it I hope you can see it in the light here I hope you can see it it is a beautiful beautiful uh, variation on the Bowie I know the Mark 8 is the Bowie knife of Last Blood but that is still the ethos of the Bowie knife is still written huge in that blade. The sub hilt is a nice ergonomic little aesthetic visual flourish which does serve a genuine physical purpose as well. Which I, I've got to only endorse. I know a lot of people don't like it but I've said how that helps your grip, how that helps you. So if you're going to keep your thumb down You've still got even more tactile grip on that, on that hilt. So much more grip and manoeuvrability with it. So much more balance. You put your thumb for close quarter for actual fighting. Bringing it round, parrying, slack, slack, a slash and hack. In Kiltman jargon, that's a slack. <laughs> but it's a wonderful, wonderful bit of kit. And for a remarkably cheap price. Come on. You know what makes sense. If you're into your Rambo movies, you're into your blades, you're into your movie replicas, it's a no it's honestly it's a no-brainer. I waited far too long to get hold of this knife. And now I'm absolutely made up with it. It is a beaut. There's a couple more Rambo knives we need to look at. We need to look at the, um, the First Blood Part 2 boot knife. We need to get that one done. And the Rambo 4 
machete you need to get that done as well and at some point we'll have a look at the um the mark 8 which is the bowie the standard the, the black version of this the cross guard is not the same it's not got the same tooled cross guard it does not have the sub hilt but it's very ergonomic as well though and it's a great sort of combat weapon but folks there you go that's the rambo rambo last blood heart stopper is there a beautiful bit of kit from anglo arms and from prepper's shop links below folks so in the meantime and in the in between time you guys keep it kilted keep it celtic hmm i feel like i should be drinking tequila Be happy, be healthy. Whatever you're doing, make sure you're having fun doing it. Because if it's not fun, stop doing it. If it is fun, you can do it again tomorrow. Keep having fun. That's the order of the day. So folks, in the meantime and in between time, please keep it counter, keep it counter, and I'm gonna see you all.